The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. So welcome to the Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series here with Raggy Horner. Uh, this is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, just a quick audio uh, video check. Uh, can you guys uh, hear me and see my screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay. All right, good. Then uh, we're all set to go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're really, really happy uh, to come across uh, and find out that uh, uh, Raggy has been using Bookmap. I didn't really know this until just, uh, um, uh, I think, about a month ago or so, uh, and uh, was uh, re really excited here. So, you know, I've, uh, uh, I've been uh, following uh, Raggy for, for quite a while, actually, when I started trading. Uh, she's uh, She's been trading uh, for, for a long time here, since age 17, while still in high school. Uh, has a passion for communicating the message of the markets as well as teaching traders how to find an edge in the currency and futures markets. She's an um, author of three different books. Uh, she's um, uh, always out speaking in different engagements and seminars, uh, as well as the uh, chief currency analyst at uh, IBFX uh, and uh, uh, travels all around the globe here uh, sharing the, the uh, knowledge that she has gained uh, and is currently with uh, simplercurrencies.com. Okay, uh, and if you have any kind of uh, um, questions about Bookmap, uh, there's, you can always reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, our Twitter feed is there as well, uh, and then um, uh, our support uh, email and website. Uh, risk disclaimer, I need to go through that. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss. Uh, and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, and then uh, uh, here it is, if, you, if you're interested in reaching out to Raggy and more information about her, uh, here is her website, her Twitter, her YouTube channel, and her email, uh, as well as uh, bookmap special offers uh, that are from her. Okay, I'm gonna put this into the chat so you don't need to uh, write all this down or anything like that. Uh, I'll put it in several times during this webinar. Uh, you can click on the links. It's in the chat box here. So there you go. Uh, go ahead and uh, uh, you know click on those if you're interested in, in uh, uh, reaching out to Raggy or finding more information about her. Uh, other than that, um, I'm just going to turn it right over to uh, to Raggy and and let her take it away. And all right, sounds great. Let me let me get the screen going here. All right, I'm not sure which screen you guys are seeing yet. Hang on one sec. This is the fun of multiple monitors. Uh, let's see. So I see kind of a price channel. All right, let me, uh, I know one of these is, there we go. Mm. How's that? Oh, okay, there we go, yep. <laughs> Yeah, scanning across 10 monitors is always fun. There we go. We got the magic one. All right. Very cool. All right. So let's get going. Again, thank you so much to Bookmap and to Bruce. And yes, I have been I have been a subscriber. Actually, I'm a lifetime subscriber of uh, Bookmap and I've been enjoying using the platform as I think many of you have. And I'm always finding new ways to get more from the transparency and quite frankly, the edge that it gives me. And, you know, I remember this sort of being reduced, and this is kind of going back. Some of you might remember things like an audio squawk when uh, you were trading the S&P pit traded contract, you know, forget the electronic minis. Uh, you know, I remember hearing a squawk, some of you might remember from uh, Ben Lichtenstein way back when, and we'd hear what was going on on the floor. Well, this to me is that, but better. You know, what I'm able to see is that transparency. To me, it's sonar. You know, that's kind of the way I look at my trading. You know, what, what am I able to see? What kind of tools can I use or develop that give me the ability to see what other traders simply can't? And, and that's really what, uh, you know, Bookmap is to me. It's that sonar sort of pinging away, showing me where that liquidity support resistance may be. So with that in mind, you know, uh, of course, if there are any questions, we'll keep this very conversational and and for sure uh, Bruce will step in and you know we can we can 
take any questions that you guys would like. What I've done this morning is what I do every morning, which is I'll, I'll trade pre-market and I'll trade, you know, obviously during the more popular market hours. But what I did is I grabbed some screenshots that I want to kind of cover as we just sort of move through the uh, the session here. And what you'll notice is I've got a little bit of the platform that I use just to look at some charting. And then really what the, the integral part of Bookmap is for me is not just that trend that isn't visible immediately on the candlestick or the Western bar chart, what have you. What's going on inside that one minute candle or that five minute candle? And that for me is the edge that we get because a lot of folks won't know what's going on inside that candle without the dots, without the pie chart of the dots, and, and even the, the accumulation of the dots at particular price levels. So I think a, a few folks in the past have asked me, Rob, do you trade exclusively through Bookmap or do you kind of go through different tools? So I don't want anybody feeling like they couldn't supplant, they couldn't replace the charts they're using with Bookmap. But, you know, having been trading now, and, and yeah, I started trading at 15. Um, I really took it seriously at 17. <laughs> and um, so seriously that I darn near flunked out of college. I was on the dean's list, but the other kind, when they tell you, yeah, we might have to ask you to leave, because I was too busy sitting in my dorm rooms, uh, trading, look, you know, looking at charts and, and trying to find those levels. And, you know, so this was a big part of my life. But now that I've got tools like Bookmap, again, I think that's where possibly a lot of you are sitting, where I know there's something I can do here. I'm not necessarily ready to let go of some of the technical analysis or support resistance work that I do. But what does time and price oriented volume tell me? So let's let's talk about one thing first. And let's talk about what most of the market's already doing. So I'm in a I'm in a kind of a platform that allows me to mark up the charts a little bit here. I hope you guys can see it pretty clearly. And and um, and I'm happy to give you guys these screen grabs, but this is what I did this morning. So these are all from literally just a handful of hours ago. Uh, and, and I wanted to show you guys, you know, what we were looking at, what I did this morning here in my office. So first of all, what is most of the market looking at? You know, most of the market is looking at some sort of volume bar at the bottom of their chart, you know, traditional volume, as I did many, many moons ago, until I learned that time-based volume alone really wasn't going to give me the transparency or the insight into what was happening, really happening on the chart. So if I take this, you know, and, and these are just literally from my desktop. I, I usually have side-by-side -side markets, whether it's NASDAQ and, and the uh, S&P or whether it's gold and the yen. I was trading a lot of gold and yen today, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about, you know, whatever market you guys want to break down. But what I want to point out is there might be levels on the chart. So let's take, for example, this image of the the yen here on the right and you'll see i put some arrows there to point out that's a zone that i'm watching that's based on historical volatility all right so part of our topic here today is how i use historical volatility in book map so you know i think like a lot of us we might be looking at some sort of you know platform where we're looking at sort of traditional candlesticks or or western bar chart and i know there's a zone here based on the typical price movement range for the Japanese yen futures contract between nine and 10 that projects a low here. You know, a lot of us have different ways to find support and resistance. But what are the reasons it's sort of flawed or incomplete might be a better way to put it, if you will, is because when this happens, I don't really know, and none of us really do, what's actually happening underneath, right? So I'm gonna jump on over to the corresponding chart that I've captured here of the yen okay here we go so this is the corresponding book map for that chart so what happens is i start sinking into this historical based volatility support level so so let me let me give you a little background on what that is so i'll look at six months of historical volatility and break it down into what type of price movement range do i see between 9 and 10 o'clock eastern 10 and 11 11 and 12 for the entire day 
right, for the entire day. And then once that level projects based on typically what the market does, I'm going to then make sure that book map is telling me that there is based on price oriented volume, not time, right? Remember, most folks, folks are looking at volume based on time, which doesn't tell you where the participation took place. It doesn't tell you where that commitment, that conviction, that size took place. So then I'll head on over to book map and say, okay, I've got a range that I'm interested in. Timing and finding that best level for, for our entry is of course what we do as traders, right? So then now start looking at where I get two things. And, and, and gang, I'm showing you guys sort of a very rudimentary, basic, sort of the building blocks of when I first started using book map, like I said, I guess about almost a year ago now, what was the first thing that I sort of observed again and again and again. Now, as you have more time behind the platform, you're gonna see so much more nuance. But if I dove into the nuance here in our first discussion together, I think a lot of folks might find it overwhelming and confusing. So let's start with the building blocks of what I do with Bookmap. And the two building blocks are very, very simple, almost embarrassingly simple. I know where that support or resistance may be. Now, you might be using Fibonacci. You might be using traditional support and resistance. Maybe you're using chart patterns. Maybe you're using volume profile, right? I'll still take a look at book map. Somebody asked me one time, is, is this going to override or is this going to be, be something that I'll, that I'll, uh, that volume profile would override? Oh, gosh, no. Oh, gosh, no. Because remember, sonar, we're getting a different view of the market than we would see on a, on our traditional, say, candlestick chart. So I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at the congregation, you know, how many dots are congregating at a particular level and does that level jive with what I'm looking at on, you know, any kind of historical price movement range, support or resistance. So here's a resistance level that I was looking at earlier this morning on the, on the yen, I've been shorting yen all morning. And when I rally into a level like this, within the context of an overall downtrend, let me show you the book map corresponding with that. The, the main question then becomes, am I also, and let's see, that's gold from this morning here. Okay. Am I also seeing, and this was that section right here. So if you're wondering, okay, Rog, where does that sync up with your chart? It syncs up with all of this. All right. So I'm, I'm trading up into this area right in here, which, you know, I'm not sure if the market's going to hold that level. I know that I want to be sure. And then I see this on book map and I know two things. One, look at all the dots congregating, and there's not a lot of activity at the moment. The market's waiting on something, so I know I'm going to need a catalyst. So not only is Bookmap telling me this thing is utterly sandwiched. Does everyone see that? I mean, look at the way it's surround. It's literally sandwiched, right? But I'm not getting that, that big dot. I'm not getting that participation yet. I'm not getting that breach with conviction. And remember, these are, these are going to be slightly smaller dots than I would see after 930 Eastern. And one of the things a lot of folks tell me is it's so tough to trade pre-market, not with Bookmap, because I'm able to see things that someone looking at sort of a sparsely populated one minute or three minute or five minute chart, is it going to be able to feel? And I love that word with Bookmap. You can literally feel the surge and then you see it. Boom, there it is. So I'm already wanting to be bearish. I already see this thing is sandwiched. I'm just looking for the follow through. So what I'm able to do with a lot of confidence is take my short, and I'm able to wait. And I can't emphasize how important the ability to understand when to just chill out and wait is. Because a lot of folks get impatient, they get uncertain, doubt starts to fill their mind because, oh, well, maybe the market's gonna really explode higher on me or maybe I'm in the wrong trade. The ability to understand what's going on inside these one minute candles, it's not giving me a lot. This gives me the confidence, all right? So I don't know if any questions have popped up yet on this example, but again, I want to look at the, the, the congregate, you know, these dots congregating, and then I'm looking for the size of the dot. I want that one big dot showing me, okay, here's that push coming in. Here's either that respect for support. Here's that respect for resistance. Or in this case, after that really nice consolidation, where I'm already looking at a historical price movement range exhaustion zone, now I'm getting that confirmation. So 
I thought I'd take any questions if they've arrived so far. Um, some questions uh, looking at uh, some different markets. Nothing, nothing on the uh, image that you're you're showing uh, at the okay. moment. Okay. So I, it's okay. What are the questions? I'm happy to. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, people would like to take a look at um, uh, the the Nasdaq or the uh, um, sure. the YM uh, or sure. and the ES as well. You got it. You got it. What you think so about? you know, I know that a lot of folks love the indices, and I think one of the things I really wanted to do was was definitely point out that, and I do have plenty of um, examples there too, but this morning, for example, um, I had another example, another setup in gold. I have a lot of folks come to me looking at Bookmap for the broader averages, but gosh, gang, um, the edge you get in looking at yen, bonds, gold, crude, uh, it's so amazing. It's almost like this, this market that folks overlook and and I definitely didn't want to neglect the broader averages, but take a look at the gold market here, and then I'll definitely move on to uh, some of the stock index examples. I have a zone once again, overall expectation for movement lower. I already can confirm that with book map as I'm seeing the market stair step lower. And I get this zone up here around 1611, 1612 that I know I'd like to short into. Now, is that going to be exhaustive or is that potentially a, a zone at which the market's going to just take off on me? And so this is that same zone on book map. So I know that there's this wick that's happening. I know that I, and I have this limit order out there that I'd like to sell at. But again, having the conviction coming from book map, again, I see a lot of congregation of dots. Okay, that's fine. But then I get the, the larger dot size. And this is very rudimentary. But gang, it's it's it for me, it increases the probability of that exhaustion, increases the probability of the follow through, and certainly increases my conviction when I see a level that I'm watching, that 1611. So you can see that right over here on the right side. And then boom, I get that dot. So um that that I hope is something that for those of you that are trying to take the book map platform and then marry it with something you're already doing, it does not have to supplant something you're doing, it's only going to make it better. And I think that's definitely something I wanted to, you know, drive home with uh, the examples here. So let me grab some of the screenshots. Uh, I, I have a question for okay. you, uh, Raggy, on the, on the, uh, on the 6, 6J there. Sure. Uh, on the way down uh, in, into some of these areas, I mean, uh, I like the way that you looked for the setup and, and looking for something very specific. Uh, and, uh, and then once that occurs, uh, y you know, uh, what you're looking for and the follow through uh, to the downside. Um, uh, how about uh, managing um, the uh, the trade on 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 the downside? Uh, any anything in particular you're looking at? Well, uh, so here's the here's the combination of that trade that I took this morning, which was basically shorting uh, 9068 and change down to 9061. And you'll see that just like I had the historical price movement range projection here. I'm looking to ride it down to this area, but at the same time, I'm also looking for a book map to confirm one of two things. Um, can I can I ride it further, or am I seeing a lot of support in that area? So let me get that 6J chart again. Okay, so you'll notice that this zone is happening around 62 to 60, and here's that same chart. So as we're heading down, a lot of folks ask me, well, Rock, how do we know when to push, you know, our trades or, or how do we know when to, and I have a lot of screen grabs here, gang, I know, but so so I guess the main question is, how do I know my targets? Well, my targets are going to be in many ways the, the exact opposite of my entries. I want to see the, the, again, the dots start to congregate and I want to see some size. If I start to see some size and again, the dots congregate and you know, in the very beginning stages of using Bookmap, gang, have a rudimentary feel, a very basic foundational feel for, for the order flow, for the flow that you're seeing. You'll eventually get much more nuanced, much more advanced with it. But I think a lot of folks that, I, that I've seen wander into Bookmap from the folks that I trade with, they get too advanced and they, and they try to use too much of clearly what this platform can do. But I think they get intimidated and, and ultimately um, they get frustrated because they're just not starting with that basic. So for me, the basics are going to be the opposite, Bruce. I'm going to be looking for, 
you know, the dots to congregate and then I need size. So I had congregation here, you know, the dots were starting to congregate, but I didn't really see the size that I was concerned about. I did at 48. I did at 48. So all of a sudden I've got a dot that's a little bit bigger than the others so far. I see it growing. I see it growing. I see it growing. Am I in a zone on my sort of traditional charting, if you will, that looks like support? I'm going to confirm it there. And, and it's interesting also, if you take a look just south, take a look at the volume here. I think a lot of folks who look at volume might have ignored this. And I'm talking about time-based time volume, not price-based volume. They might have ignored that because they saw this spike in volume here, I really wasn't concerned with that at all. That didn't shake me out because Bookmap told me, don't worry about it. Yeah, this is not price-based support in terms of volume. Here, I was a little bit more concerned. And I said, you know what? Let's scale out. Let's get out while we can, not when we have to. I'm not going to get flat, though, because if I just look at this trend here, as it continues to fall, I'm not going to bail. I'm not going to get flat but I will scale out and I'll move my stop to a break even. So I'm looking for, again, a level that I'm probably already interested in. And then I wanna see that some size is coming in, but I'm not necessarily concerned about what most of, most of the market is looking at, which is that time-based volume. We're able to see as it grows. Remember, the one thing that we're not able to see in this conversation is the way that dot starts to grow. And at that point, you know, I'm thinking to myself, get out while you can, not when you have to, Rog. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. So in the very beginning stages, what I'm teaching you guys is what I teach my members. Don't worry about the smaller dots. It's always a relative comparison. Look for the dots to congregate, but then don't, don't let that be the only thing you're looking for, but then look for size. And if, if you get both of those um, happening, those dots congregating and then size, you've got something. So uh, that's really how I'll proactively manage a winning trade and, and book maps had me really beautifully actually let's go to a live chart of this because this thing's had me short all morning long i haven't in any way been completely uh squeezed out of it i think a lot of folks around let me show you here around this time right on the chart between 10:45 and 11 o'clock I can tell you a lot of the shorts got spooked because if they were looking at, let me show you here. If they're looking at traditional charts, which I'm always going to marry, you know, if they're looking at the traditional charts, they started seeing a little bit of strength here. And, and this is where I know for me, I don't get squeezed out of this stuff. I don't get, I don't get fooled into thinking the ride is over anymore because even though that started to bounce here, notice how Bookmap hardly flinched. I had a lot of size, I had a lot of size, but I really didn't see anything more than that congregation moving sideways. And then look at all the resistance above. And that's the stuff that we don't see. That's the sonar we can't see on a traditional Western bar chart or candlestick. So yeah, I'm a little concerned, but then I realized, okay, we're just sandwiched. Let me give the market a minute. And if I start to see where we're getting down through support, and I start to see size again, kind of like the way my trade started in the first place, the sideways action earlier in the morning around 7.15 to 8 a.m. Eastern. You know, I think the patience that this gives me is really just off the charts. That's really what I'm able to get from this. So um, this is where I'm still short this market, and this was probably one of my best trades on the morning that thanks to Bookmap, I was able to take advantage of much, much earlier today. I mean, this is now going into the fourth hour of staying short from this area around in the low 9060s. I mean, I'm, I'm 50 ticks into this. So uh, when, when people talk about, well, you know, are you just scalping with bookmark? Oh gosh, no, I'm trend following gang. I'm trend following with this thing. And I think that's where for me, I have so much more confidence. Is that, is that somewhat helpful, Bruce? Is that you think that gives offers a little bit more understanding? Oh, 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 oh yeah, you 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 nailed it. <laughs> That's uh, okay. more, way more than uh, uh, than I, I had anticipated. Uh, uh, really, really nice answer. Um, let's see uh, some questions about. Um, we we always get this about time frames uh, and how you deal with that. Like uh, I, if you want to answer that, I I, I mean I think you kind of covered it with. Um, you're looking at your higher time frame chart and your zones, and then you're just zooming into Bookmap for your zones. 
uh, you're not really looking at any sort of time frame within Bookmap. I'm not, and that's what I love about Bookmap because if I want to be confined by time, there's traditional ways to do that. You know, I think Bookmap, not to get all philosophical, but it, it transcends time. I don't, you know, remember that we're forcing a candlestick to to con, you know, we're confining it to a certain slice of psychology. I have enough of those types of tools and enough of that kind of view. So what book maps giving me is something that is showing me when size is coming in, uh, not necessarily being confined by a one minute chart or a five minute chart. So this to me, it doesn't matter if I'm trading a one minute chart of the NASDAQ or the S&P. We have the S&P on the chart right now. Uh, I'll show you what I did in the S&P today. And um, I think you guys are gonna love this. And then, well, you know what, let me just, let me show you all and then hopefully that it'll it'll resonate. So this is another one of my layouts. I'm looking at the NASDAQ and the S&P, but let's just, let's just blow up this chart of the S&P. Okay, so the bell rings and typically I'm going to let about the first 30 minutes transpire. So that's the clearing range. And I know a lot of folks say, wow, 30 minutes? Look, are there ways to trade the first 30 minutes slightly more aggressively? Absolutely, and I'll use Bookmap for that. But again, let's lay a really good, basic, sort of conservative foundation for the use of this tool. And then, you know, certainly we can get more advanced and nuanced. So let's let the first 30 minutes transpire. The sheer ability, the discipline that you're gonna develop by learning to, to exercise that patience muscle is gonna be invaluable. So what, what's, this is what I see the broader markets doing. So the market rallied up and, and through all this, you're gonna have the momentum players out there in the market, you know, watching the market climb, 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 climb. And, and you can see it in the action. All of a sudden, you have a lot of folks committing to the long side in this little cluster that I've circled there, right? Now, I'm not getting sort of, let's call it bamboozled by that for, for two reasons. One, as the market was rallying, you can see through here, we were already seeing size to the upside, telling me that even though the first two minutes after the bell shot down to about 33.78, I'm not gonna be fooled into taking a short. Look at the dots. There, I'm not seeing any real size. Now look at all the volume, the old fashioned, and, and I'm not poking fun at any type of trader, I'm, I'm really not, but we've got to, as traders, kill the dogma and the misuse, and really, quite frankly, the overuse of time-based volume. I'm gonna go so far as to say it's nearly useless. When you have book map, you're gonna find out how misleading it can be. So the market's heading lower and people see the high volume. And a lot of folks are going to think we need to short the market. Well, good luck to them. What they didn't know is what we know as bookmap users. Nobody's home. I'm not seeing conviction there. All right, so let's move. And, and regardless, I want to let the first 30 minutes transpire. But, but take a look. So then we start to move a little bit higher. And you'll notice right about here, now I'm starting to see some size. And when am I seeing some size? The momentum players are coming in. I can see it on my charts. We're starting to move higher, but the momentum players are starting to come in. They've seen the market tick up from 33.78 and a half to about 33.81 and a half. They've seen these three points go by. And again, now they're seeing the momentum and now they're committing. And then they're committing some more and they're committing some more. Now, this is basically taking us to, as you can tell here, only about 9.40. All right. If I'm going to play with momentum, well, well, these are the folks that I want to surf, right? This is the big wave that's forming, and I'm going to paddle out to it. And if I want to ride that, I will. But I'm still, personally, I was still flat. What I'm waiting for, again, is that first 30 minutes. Well, where do we see the, sort of the crescendo of sort of the blind zombie horde Momo? You know, I call them endearingly, maybe not endearingly, the FOMO, MOMO, bozos out there. What are they getting in? Right there, right? They Now, the folks who weren't intelligent book map oriented scalpers seeing the size, what happened? Look at these smaller dots. And I'm telling you, that's where most folks go, oh, I'm not going to watch any more of this. Let's get long. What do we know as book map folks? Don't do that. Don't do that. Not only were we hitting, uh, I believe at that point in time, 
uh, about the 3387 area, I'm seeing a little bit of larger size. Smaller dots, two big dots, I know that there's selling pressure sitting there. We know there's selling pressure, pressure sitting there because of all the different transparency that we have. Okay, the first 30 minutes is done. Okay, and we haven't been bamboozled into shorting. Thank you, Bookmap. We haven't been bamboozled into buying the top. Again, thank you, Bookmap. Now, this is what I do. Patience, gang. This is the trade. And a lot of folks get overridden by the whole FOMO and they miss the trade. We pull back. And then I'm looking for support in this zone, essentially between 33.84 and 33.81 and a quarter, 81 and a half. Now, that's a fairly wide range. But what I'm looking for is, once again, congregation, you know, all these dots that congregate, the size to start to show me that, okay, yep, we're starting to see some size here in the 83 area. And, and that's going to give me the confidence to step in and, and buy the area between 83 and 84. And that's a pullback, by the way. So remember, I'm not supplanting stuff that I love. I'm confirming it and making it better. We're adding a degree of sonar that traditional analysis, like say a Fibonacci, doesn't have, right? Or, or traditional clearing range breaches don't have. So now I've got the sonar, now I can pinpoint my entry, now I have a lot more confidence. Uh, I did two things, I bought uh, SPY, I bought calls in the SPY, and I got long the uh, S&P, and, and that's how I waited for the size to one, tell me don't buy up here, and two, now that we've what I call retreated into a zone that is a pullback into volume weighted average price and a Fibonacci retracement of the clearing range, I mean, that's really clear as day to me, only because I knew that I want to be a buyer in here, but I'm not quite sure where, and I'm not quite sure when, right? Where and when is pretty important for us as traders. And then I had the conviction, even though it sort of bounced around for a while, I had size here. I saw where the traders were committed, and then that triggered the buy. So for not one second did we think about the short side of the market, and then we've been just pretty much committed to the buy. And I took profit, my first profit, and I'm gonna scale out again at some point, but I took my first profit, let me show you where, and, and this is where Bookmap does again, confirm for me. So I know that we have a clearing range high, that's this right here, see that? I carry that across, Take a look at this, gang. That's not an accident. Look at this dot that happens right in there. I'm not looking to pick tops and bottoms. I know that I'm going to leave a few points on the table. I want to, again, pay myself while I can, not when I have to, right? And so that was the first time I scaled out of the trade. And then now I'm going to let this market continue to, to go in my favor, especially when I've got gorgeous levels like this telling me, Rog, stay patient, stay patient, okay? So uh, that's that was this morning's trade, and that's how Bookmap gave me, again, um, and, and think about the complementary nature of what Bookmap already did, which is since about 7 a.m. have me short the yen. You think on a day where the yen is this short, I'm not going to have a lot of bullish conviction, and again, the Bookmap's giving me that, that sonar, that transparency, that this view is going to help but isn't designed to offer me. So does that help, gang? This, this is just literally from hours ago, and it's still a position that I'm managing to, to the upside. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Um, uh, great, great feedback. Uh, great, great examples here, uh, Raggy, very okay. helpful. Any, any questions, any points of confusion that I can address or? Um, yeah, some questions about, um, uh, well, there, there's a few things that um, uh, I know. I know you're using uh, Bookmap 7.0. Um, some people are asking if you've tried the uh, volume delta dots with 7.1. Uh, that's something I can I can show you uh, uh, maybe uh, after the webinar, uh, Raggy. Uh, as as well as um, uh, transact data uh, and uh, not offering uh, full depth of market. You're only getting 10 uh, levels on the bid and 10 on the offer. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, market depth, uh, although it, you know, the areas you're pointing to uh, and uh, and the way that you're reading the the heat map with the volume uh, is is working uh, quite quite well for you here. Uh, so yeah, I think you bring up a really great point. Um, so when I've got 
you know, and again, I, I know everyone's coming to this discussion from varying degrees of, of using Bookmap. So whenever I'm meeting a group for the first time, and again, I really appreciate everyone, you know, taking time out in the morning to join Bruce and I. Whenever I'm, you know, introducing something to a group for the first time, you know, I really start with the absolute basics. And, you know, one thing that my members have is, is the transact data, right? And I, and I always want to make something as affordable and seamless in the early stages as possible, because I think for a lot of traders, and, and I myself included, a lot of folks get a cool tool, but they uh, get way too advanced with it too quick. They start committing a lot of capital to it too quick, and then they grow frustrated and, and abandon it. And, and, and this is something I was acutely aware of because I did not want my traders to feel like they had to have a huge amount of time commitment, a, a very steep and intimidating learning curve, or even quite frankly, uh, a lot of capital commitment. So I, I liked being able to ease people into it because within about, and I'll tell you this, within about 60 to 90 days max, everybody's like, okay, I'm ready. I, I'm committed. I got it. This thing's making me money. And I love people to have their own aha moment. And, and so that's why we have this very gradual sort of learning curve um, with this. This is how I sort of onboard my traders. In, in I, and I hope what is the least intimidating and, and least, um, you know, basically consuming way possible. But am I showing you everything that we can do? No, of course not. No, absolutely not. But I think this is a very um, gradual way to start to implement a tool into our into our trading. And, you know, I deal with a lot of traders that are very oftentimes um, jaded by the number of just awful tools out there. And, and of course, Bookmap is one of the most valuable that I have. I almost feel like I'm cheating when I'm using this and I don't want anybody to grow frustrated or, or give up on it too quickly. So, so this is the way I usually sort of onboard my traders so that they can, they, they'll stick with it, right? And, and realize that this is one of those real deal, unbelievable edges in the market that, that are out there right now. So that's kind of where I'm coming from, Bruce. Okay, great. Um, that answers those questions. Um, another question that um, uh, earlier on, someone was asking about, uh, you know, you, you trade Forex, spot Forex quite a bit, uh, and you're looking at the um, uh, currency futures uh, from the CME here. Um, so are you applying, are you, are you trading directly? Well, I, I imagine you're trading directly in the, uh, uh CME, um, but, uh, also in the spot as well, and maybe some of the crosses or how, how do you extrapolate some of the data from Bookmap into that? So, um, Forex is a little different an animal. I mean, I haven't yet, you know, I've been probably dedicating most of the time that I've had Bookmap with you know the the main seven futures that I trade with my crew back at Simpler Trading, which is ES, uh, NQ, RTY, YM, uh, ZB, uh, GC, and 6J. So those seven markets are are what I'm predominantly day trading, and and I've been actually experimenting a little bit with with equities uh, as well. So I haven't really done a lot in terms of forex with this. Um, you know, the currency features are fine, but Forex becomes a completely different animal because, for example, in dollar yen, uh, I like to, I prefer to be in, in some currency relationships, a yen bull, uh, that would be Australian dollar yen and New Zealand dollar yen. But generally speaking, the problem with dollar yen, and, and I've known this since I had a position in it on a longer term time frame, the issue with dollar yen is just the immense amount of strength we're seeing in the US dollar. So if I'm gonna use Bookmap to trade, say that dollar strength, I'll pull up the uh, the 6E. So, you know, right now, I think a lot of folks are noticing that the dollar is just in fuego right now. So I'll pull up the 6E to play, to play the dollar. And so uh, you're not always gonna have on the currency future side of things, the best pair combinations that that is going to be far better on forex but if i'm trading the dollar against something then i'll definitely use the book map and i'll definitely use the currency futures for that okay excellent uh let's see here um do you do any automated uh trading strategies as well not really uh i i do in other markets uh, i actually have some some 
automated strategies in Forex, but I'm only because it's something that uh, I've been curious about. You know, can I have something running in the background while I'm discretionary trading? But I'm a discretionary trader. You know, with tools like this, it, it's less discretion and more just waiting for the evidence of a trend correction and evidence of trend continuation. Uh, so, so not really. Uh, I I prefer discretionary trading, and when I have something like this, I just like I said, I feel like I have a tremendous edge on the market that's still looking at a very dogmatic, traditional way of looking at time-based um, volume and not price-based volume. And and that might seem like a very like a, like a semantic difference. And I think to everyone here in this room, you guys know the difference because the the price-based volume that that is is really where my trading has been evolving too for, for a couple of years now. Okay, excellent. Um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Jerry is asking here about uh, uh, percentage wise, like, uh, you know, optimizing your, your, um, your, your profit and losses here, I guess, uh, uh, using bookmap, have you seen a dramatic difference uh, pre bookmap as opposed to post? Okay, so are my levels more accurate is really the, the question, right? I mean, if the levels are more accurate, my entries are going to be better, my stops are going to be better. You know, that's another thing that, and this will be a great topic for maybe a future conversation, but think about stop placement for a moment. You know, I'll still use historical price movement ranges for stops, but if I'm trying to put a trailing stop on, on this trade and I don't respect, I mean, these levels right in here as support, this is where a lot of people use dollar-based or arbitrary point-based stop levels. I'll, I'll use bookmap for my stops as well. I mean, why on earth would I not want to, and especially since I've got so much unrealized profit in this, why on earth would I not want to let this market sell off to layers like this and, and place a trailing stop below this? So um, not only is the answer yes, but I want to tell you why. So it, that'd be really easy to say yes, and that's such a you know, sort of flat binary con conversation, but why is it? Like, why Why are my entries better? Why are my stops better? Why are my targets better? It's the transparency and the conviction that I have that, you know, when I see, again, either the dots start to congregate or the dots start to increase in size, or I start to see where the order flow is is waiting, um, all my levels are just more accurate. Now, I'm, I'm still using um, my tools, but, there's a lot of levels that I could consider. So, you know, is it going to be the value area high? Is it going to be the point of control? Is it some time-based volume weighted average prices? You know, I think one thing that all of us traders struggle with are having numerous levels that could be potential reaction levels. You know, it could be potential support or could be potential resistance. And this, this basically um, reduces those choices down to a very actionable finite number. And, and again, that, that increases confidence and that increases accuracy. And so it's not just yes, but it's a hell yes. <laughs> and that's, and that's why I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, that, that can, uh, a hell yes will certainly confirm it um, for us. Uh, uh, so um, uh, a, a few questions here um, that uh, I think I'll just uh, kind of uh, a answer very quickly um, for you is uh, sure. about um the um, uh, coloration of the volume dots there. Um, it, yeah, James, it's not uh, bid and ask. It's 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 the aggressor of uh, uh, that that is being displayed there. It's um, market buy and sell orders in the dots. Okay, it's uh, that's that's what's being displayed. The um, uh, let's see what else here. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Marie. Yes, uh, she's using uh, uh, Infinity Futures. Uh, and about the uh, correlation to the bid and offer. No, I'm sorry. Here, I'm, I got now. I lost my uh, my place. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, Oh, oh, about the details in the um, in the volume dots as well. Yes, you can see those. You can use the data tip tool and hover over. Uh, you can also zoom in and, and see all the specifics. Uh, yep, she's using the data tip tool there. Uh, if you if you want the very specifics about what is going on in that volume, okay. 
And uh, as you zoom in, you'll be able to break it down and, and see even, um, you know, down to nanosecond resolution if, if you want. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that answers those. Uh, let's see here. Can I answer something just real quickly, gang? When I was introducing how to use sort of the pie chart of the dots, and a lot of folks were asking, okay, you know, what's the red versus green, Rob? So um, this is the way I look at it. Notice that since we've been moving higher, notice how few dots, and most of those dots were smaller, were mostly red. So let me point out a couple of them right here. That one right there, you'll see it's mostly red, but very small. Notice the larger dots are mostly green. So that to me is still relatively bullish. I may proactively take some profit just because of the, the large size that's happening. Because look, I, I don't want to overstay my welcome in any trend. But it, when people ask me about the coloration, the way, it, and, and maybe Bruce, you can tell me if this is super accurate or not, but until you start seeing large dots that are dominating the red, as far as I'm concerned with this trend, I'm not going to be concerned that I'm going to be overpowered by, by a formidable amount of selling. So again, my, my level of relaxation to continue to follow this trend, despite the fact that it's pulling back a little bit, is because I'm not seeing a dot that's dominated by the red that's a large size. So Bruce, would you say it's fairly accurate? Uh, absolutely. Uh, in, in fact, I mean, uh, uh, there's so many different ways. I, 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 I really like the way you're zoomed out looking at the bigger picture here uh, uh, using Bookmap um, and, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, being patient um, with your trading and your, your uh, management. Um, and, you know, you can, you can um, filter the volume in, in many different ways as well as the heat map. Uh, and uh, the way that you're filtering and reading it is uh, uh, giving you uh, a, a lot of insight. I think one thing I find that, you know, this view to me, and again, I think a lot of, and I, and I want to speak for anybody, but I think a lot of folks think this is just a tool to get in and get out and get in and get out. And um, sure, you can if you'd like. I'm not a scalper by nature. I don't particularly like that type of trading. And, and certainly you can do this because this is like literally seeing you know, to me, like I said, as we started this conversation, it's like seeing the pit, only now it's visualized. But I think the one thing that I really wanted to get across to everybody with my time with you guys is the fact that, one, it can be a tool that acts as a filter for other tools, you know, because uh, we all, we're all coming to Bookmap typically from another charting platform, and a lot of folks don't want to abandon things they're already doing. So what I say is this supercharges it. It makes it better because you've got that ability to be a sonar trader, your sonar trading. And, and number two, I think a lot of folks really overlook the fact that this is a tremendous trend following tool. You know, if you want to find those intraday trends and have the conviction to stick with them, you know, I'm in a trade right now that's, you know, about seven points in a pretty narrow day. And and if you if you think about what broader market participants probably did and this little pocket right here, they either did one of two things. They bailed or they got short. And, and when I'm able to look and just chill out and look at where the size is at and look at the size of the dots, notice I'm not, I'm not giving it a second thought and notice how the markets are just kind of floating back up again. You know, I'm looking at it's 92 and a half for my next target. You know, when I scale out again and I'll be down to, I think about two or three lots at that point for the remainder of the day, right? And another thing to remember too, once you've got the ability to have a nice cushion of profit, take a look at that VWAP. Take a look at the VWAP sitting there and say, look, as long as we're above that VWAP, which we can chart on Bookmap, you know, kind of leave it alone. I think a lot of traders don't have the ability to be patient and risk unrealized profit in order to see how, how high is high. And again, I think that's where Bookmap for me brings that level of calm where I'm just not worried about every little twitch of a candle because I can see inside the candle. I'm literally pinging away sonar inside that candle. So I hope I've gotten those points across to everybody, you know, in our short time together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some more questions about some of the volume dots. If you could just right click, uh, Raggy, on, on one of the dots and then go to the volume dot settings. They, they want to take a look at your, uh, your settings sure. there. Sure. So there you go, guys. Uh, she has the smart clustering on. Uh, and uh, and that's that's it. Uh, it's about uh, midway on the slider there. 
Um, so maybe that will answer also, I think your questions, uh, the last uh, uh, string of questions about your, your volume and the, and the, the volume dots, et cetera. I have some different settings that I do play around with on, on different um, layouts that I've, that I've saved, but I, I purposely kept things pretty default because I think before we can start to tweak things, I, I like starting off with a very default basic way of looking at a, at a new platform um, where some of you might be wandering into this, maybe you're in your first three months. You know, when you look back at your book map use after another three months, you're gonna find how much it's evolved. But I, I find that, especially with a tool like this, keep it really basic in the beginning, get really fluent in the basics and then, you know, start to tweak. I think if we tweak too quick, uh, we start to just wander too far away from just the basic out of the box goodness <laughs> that is book map because it is really good to go out of the box gang you know what you want to do with it after that is perfectly up to you but to think that you know for me i haven't tweaked a lot as you guys can tell and it doesn't need it and you know not really to be effective it really doesn't need it that's that's my opinion uh, excellent um well, another question a few questions here about stocks and how you look at stocks and maybe differently compared to the futures no difference gosh no difference at all but what i will say and maybe sometime in the future we can talk about stocks. So what I will say is the way I like to group the stock. So remember, I'm looking at Dow, Russell, NAS, S&P, yen. And remember, yen gave me a lot of confidence about the conviction that I have to the long side in the averages. So um, if I did get any short triggers, which I did earlier this morning, I ignored them. I ignored them. Uh, I got short triggers uh, aggressively on the Russell and the Dow, and thanks but no thanks. Um, you know, but when I'm going to trade stocks, what I prefer to do is, you know, grab some of the more heavily weighted names within the averages. So if I'm going to play the S&P, of course, I'm going to be keeping an eye on things like uh, sector wise, tech, healthcare, and financials. If I'm looking at the NASDAQ, which I've been the most bullish in, you know, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Google L, um, Amazon. So I will I will look at the heavily weighted names within those sectors. That way it becomes very complementary. I'm not trading something that's likely to do something very different than the broader averages. I'm not looking for an anomaly. I'm looking for sort of that more cooperative, grouped, uh, you know, correlated because of the weighting uh, approach. So it's it's not real complicated. Uh, what I'll do is, um, you know, just kind of break down the the, the average into the top 10 or 11 weighted names and I'll focus on the most heavy, heavily weighted of them and I could and I'll just run that on bookmap. Okay, excellent. Um, I think uh, you've answered, there's a lot of questions about different data fees, et cetera, and uh, you've, you've already answered those, uh, Raghi, um, very succinctly, <laughs> so uh, I think we can kind of skip over that. Uh, and um, uh, Raggy, I don't know how much time you have. We've, all, we've been going about 55 minutes or so. Um, if uh, maybe one one or two more questions, if uh, sure, whatever someone you want. wants to whatever, get, whatever get in here. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's see. By the way, gang, see the NAS that I have on the screen right now? A lot of people are going to flip out because the market moved about 10, 11 points like this, right? Now, the ability for me to stay calm with my longs and just say, hey, let the market move 10 or 11 points. The NASDAQ has a typical price movement range and look how it's sandwiched. It's really not going anywhere. Now, if I wanted to be really aggressive, I could play back and forth, but I don't wanna do that because I have mostly bullish conviction. But but look, I'll just, I'll just really sit and let the market do what it has to do when I see that it's sandwiched. And that's what I mean by the transparency and just the ability to sort of sit and be really patient with that kind of with that kind of back and forth movement that of course we're seeing during the midday doldrums, which shouldn't surprise us either. But when a lot of the market might get really intimidated or confused or antsy, and this, you know, I realize why we're doing this. See, most traders don't know why we're stuck in this range, do they? Right? But the moment I take a look at this, it's like, oh, but of course, take a look at the level to the south, take a look at the level to the north. That's why we're sandwiched, right? So that's what I mean by transparency and, and just that calm that we can have. Wow, that's a, that's a fantastic answer. Uh, and uh, a, a, a really big theme, uh, Raghi, that uh, is, it's so nice to hear is about the patience. 
uh, a lot of the uh, traders that we've had uh, webinars with, uh, they, they haven't really talked too much about that. Uh, and, and the calm and the ease that, uh, uh, that the bookmap is giving you uh, while you're in your positions and managing them. Um, I mean, look at the size of the dots near the bottom of the range, gang. You know, am I in any way concerned that as we reach support that I'm seeing size? No, they're my friends, right? They're my friends. And yeah, I see a little bit more red here, but as far as I'm concerned, there might be a little conflict in the message, but if you have directional bias, and, and take a look, this is why I love this scrunched up view. I think if we look at this chart like this, we might get bamboozled into a short. When we step back and look at the chart like this, and feel free to you know play around with that horizontal axis. Feel free to squeeze this stuff in because you're going to say, why on earth would I not look at that as an opportunity to play a pullback with a quick bounce to the upside of the current resistance? So, um, yeah, I, I hope that patience and that directional conviction is coming through. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, yeah, no, a a absolutely. Um, and uh, uh, some uh, some some very nice uh, compliments regarding that. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, so uh, we've there's some other kind of questions in, in uh, you know, kind of uh, loosely uh, or tangentially uh, related to uh, some of her answers there. Uh, so uh, I think we'll we'll kind of skip over those. But uh, um, just um, I wanted to say uh, thank you very much, Ragi. Uh, fantastic webinar. I, I'm, again, thank you so much, gang. I'm I'm a fan. Uh, you know. I've been I've been a user of Bookmark for a really long time, and you know one of the things that I always tell my members is if I'm using something, it's because I'm paying for it. I subscribe to it, and and like I said, I just met Bruce just I don't know maybe a two months ago. Bruce, we we finally got acquainted. Yeah, not not long ago at all. Uh, and, and I've been and I and I actually paid for Bookmap month to month for, and you could probably see in my account, Bruce, but I think I paid month to month for maybe two months. And about 60 days in, I'm like, sign me up. I'm done. I'm in. I'm convinced. And and that was that. So I've I've been a user, and I'm I'm really honored that you guys asked me to speak because you guys have had some epic speakers. And so um, I hope this was helpful. Um, it is purposely basic, but I really want you guys to understand that you know get that good foundation of understanding the dots congregating, the size. Um, understanding when a market sandwich, understanding that directional conviction, and then start getting a little bit more advanced with this. This will grow with you. I mean, Bookmap is certainly capable of growing with you as you get more sophisticated as a trader, but I guess I wanna say that I don't use it in a, in a really highly sophisticated way, and it's giving me a tremendous amount of transparency, that sonar, as I like to call it, in my trading. So I'm just a fan, and I'm really, really, again, thanks everyone for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it, um, thank you, Ragi. Uh, really, really wonderful stuff. Um, uh, people are asking about uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, subscription uh, uh, specials, etc. Guys, I've been putting it into the chat. Look into the chat there, uh, along with um, uh, content or con uh, 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 contact information for Ragi. Uh, that uh, you know, it's all in there. Um, this is recorded. Uh, it will be uh, on our YouTube uh, channel later today, this afternoon, uh, and then uh, uh, you know, uh, Ragi will uh, uh, also have access to that uh, to, to broadcast to you guys uh, who are um, you guys following her. Um, and uh, I, I think that's that's about it, Ragi. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, definitely uh, really uh, interested in doing another one uh, with you here, uh, maybe uh, maybe shortly. Uh, if uh, if we can we can get you that'd be that'd be fantastic. No, it'd be my pleasure. It'd be my pleasure. Okay. Well, thanks, Ragi, and thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll we'll connect another time. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye, bye.